Hi guy, welcome to the Amiga Rama podcast. I'm your host Lefarius and for this week we will be taking a look at Super Skid Marks. But as always, before we jump right into that, uh, let's have a look at some of this week's news. Now first up was something that was really, really interesting that was pointed out to me over on Facebook by uh, Aaron Smith. Uh, basically, Amiga on the Lake have, have released a 4 gig disc on module now, what that basically is, is if you're not sure, it's basically it's a tiny little chip that plugs straight onto the IDE socket inside the 1200. Uh, I'm not sure, I think it's just the Amiga 1200 so far. It might be others, or I didn't realise that at the time. But the fascinating thing about that is, you've effectively got the equivalent of a, a compact flash hard drive. You can just sit on the inside of the board. Now, usually most gaming sides for the WHD load and, and maybe if you put in classic workbench and stuff, you're looking at like about four gig in size. You can go a bit further than that if you want to extend it more. I think I've got eight gig in mind, but I like to put demos and everything in top as well. So so you can pretty much do a bit of both. But as a uh, as a gaming side, just for pure gaming, four gig is pretty much plenty. Now a bit of blurb on the website, it says, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's an AOTL sticker. No, this is a disc on module, Dom. It is a flash drive intended to be plugged directly onto the motherboard and is used as a computer hard drive. Dom devices emulate a traditional hard disk drive, resulting in no need for special drivers or other specific operating system support. So yeah, pretty much just like a compact fl uh, flash drive. Now, from what I could tell, it, it, it's usable for up to uh, 1 million reads. I think that's more than what a, a current floppy disk uh, uh, stick or even compact flash drive can actually accept. So this pretty much is the, the way to go. Uh, I'm not sure why it's only 4G at the moment. It might be something that's uh, down to limitations and that sort of thing as a chip, but there might be bigger ones further down the line. Anyway, I just thought it was quite interesting. Uh, another thing I did see in the news, uh, Amiga Kit, uh, which is amigakit.amiga.store, I've done a complete site overhaul. Now, they're someone I've used, I've no, I'm not being paid for this one, by the way, but I have used them quite a few times, especially when I was first building the 1200 for things like... Uh, 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 compact flash port covers, uh, a few bits like keyboards and getting some bits cleaned and stuff. So, you know, they're always a great site there and they've been going for years. But that website of theirs, I mean, I've, I can remember it going back like seven, eight, nine, ten years or stuff. It just hasn't changed in absolutely ages. And they completely rejigged it all up and it looks a lot better. It's a lot more flashier and I think it's a lot more functional. So I'll put a, a link as always in the description note. So please go and check that out. Now, as I'm sure you're aware by now, the show has been going for quite some time. Uh, like I said this is episode 32, and I'm happy to say that I just had a, a brand new iTunes review. This is something worth celebrating because I don't have a lot. Hint, hint, please, guys, go and sign me up for a couple. Uh, basically, Ch Cholima Speed just said it was a great show. He was really enjoying it. But it, one thing he did say, he was asking about uh, uh, game music. Uh, the thing is... I, I have tried in the past, I think it was about episode 7 where I put a bit of tunes in and I might have done it with something else as well. But I, I do share the podcast between uh, my, my current host and uh, YouTube and my biggest concern with it always is copyright strikes. I've been told from a few places I've read online that you've got to be careful with podcasts because it's effectively like a sort of radio, so it could be tackled differently. I'm not so I'm not hundred percent sure, and and a lot of podcasts I listen to they just don't bother with it, and I suspect it's because of the same thing. But if anybody knows for sure, I can give me some sort of advice. Please come to say the uh, the Twitter account, which is at Pod. Or drop me a line over on the Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash Amigarama. Uh, I'll get back to you because I'm interested to know for sure. Because I would actually like to use some music. Because there's often times when I ref refer to in-game tracks and intros and stuff. And it'd be great to just put them at the beginning. But as I say, I've held off because I've been a bit wary so far. But it's, it's something I would definitely be interested in. 
Let's move on to this week's game. And for this week, I've gone and chosen Super Skid Marks. Now, we do seem to be getting through the Amiga Classics quite uh, quickly of late. Uh, but one of the main reasons I picked this one was because back in the day, I was... This was like one of the big box games I bought. It might not have been Super Skid Max, actually. It might have been the first one. I can't remember what the cover was, but it had like the big red monster truck on the front. In fact, it was probably the first one now I think about it. The memories come flooding back to me. But it was always a, a range of games that I'd uh, keep my eye on over the years. Uh, it was published by Acid Software, uh, developed by them as well. Now, from what I could find out, they were actually based over in New Zealand. They don't seem to have uh, any string of games, really, beyond uh, uh, this, which was uh, quite bizarre, especially for a publisher. But it must have been some sort of standalone deal, as they just had uh, nothing to do with any other software. Maybe it was just uh, just such a, a big hit. Uh, I couldn't really find much out about them, it, probably because they're over in New Zealand, and uh, they just don't really have much of a history beyond that. Anyway... Uh, the game came out in 1995. Uh, it came on seven discs. There was a ECS OCS version. Uh, there was also a CD32 version later on. It was priced at £29.99, which is about uh, average, I suppose, for the time. The coders behind this were uh, Chris Blackburn and Simon Armstrong. Now, from what I could see of their history, they were only involved in the Skidmark games. Now, there was loads of these, mostly like uh, uh, update discs. Like, it was the first one, the second one, and then spin-off things involving just, like, more tracks and levels and stuff. It was a very, very short history. I'm not entirely sure why they were involved. Maybe they owned the actual company. Again, I couldn't find out. I'm quite disappointed to say. Uh, the graphics were done by Hans and Kurt Butler. I think they were related. Again, they worked on all the Skid Marks games. They also were involved in Gloom, uh, Guardian. So, quite, you know, good mix there straight away. Uh, also, the graphics were Rodney Smith. Now, interestingly enough, he did Woody's World. I think we covered that in episode 14. Uh, Road Kill. I think that's a Team 17 title. Get something called Kiro's Quest. Again, I'm sure we've mentioned that before. And he dabbled in every other Skid Marks game. They really made the money from these. Uh, music by Anthony Milas. He was behind, again, all the Skid Marks games. Uh, 1 and 2, Super Skid Marks, uh, Guardian. And that's just about where his career seems to finish. I'm not entirely sure what happened after that. though. It's this, it seems to be this game. Once you get involved with a Skid Marks game, you don't really get involved in anything else. <laughs> Now, from what I could discover about the game, uh, you can have up to uh, four players on a single Amiga. Uh, if you've got two A1200s, and again, this is going back to the mid-90s when they are already about three or four hundred pounds for a system, uh, but you can use two A1200s together to use the widescreen link mode, which apparently allows up to eight players. But you can also have four player split screen on the A1200. Now I've no way of testing that out, but I suspect it'll just be uh, into quarters. Or is it free? I'm not entirely sure. And it's not something I can test. But again, you know, this is an Amiga. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's, it's mid 90s at this point, And you wouldn't think that an Amiga could come up with something as powerful as like split screen gaming. Being a sequel to the original uh, Skid Marks, it pretty much uses the same game engine, but they have expanded it a bit out by improving the AI, doing loads more tracks, uh, cars, uh, uh, extras like different modes, stuff like that. Uh, along Alongside this, later on, there was loads and loads of data this came out. They really did mine this for as much as possible. Uh, but one thing I did notice about it when I was reading up on it is that it had twice the number of tracks that the original did. Uh, the boosting competitions and an and improvement on the difficulty for the single player because apparently it was quite buggy when it first came out with a few glitches but the single player mode was incredibly easy to play and they completely redid that and rejigged all the AI for it. They also added a high-res mode for AGA, so effectively better graphics, which is uh, always a good boost, especially back then. Uh, another thing I found out about it was well, that there was actually ports being done for the Atari Jaguar and the PlayStation. Now, the PlayStation, there doesn't seem to be any pictures or footage or anything, and I, and I read on a brief interview online that they were planning to push it more towards 3D, because it's a sort of 2D, 2.5D style, but the Jaguar 
Jaguar version, I think, would have just been a, an improved version of the CD32 edition, so probably extra music and things like that. Anyway, it just seems interesting that it wasn't just an Amiga game. I always thought it just stuck to the Amiga, but they were planning on pushing it out further. Now, another thing I noticed, there is apparently a modern version being called, which is sort of a, a remake in a way, uh, is Epic Skid Marks. Uh, it's in the middle of the development at the moment, and from the best I can see, it's due to come out sometime in 2018, and we're already almost halfway through the year. Last update on their Facebook page was put out in April, so it's still in development, it's still coming, and from the trailers and the, the pictures and stuff, it looks quite impressive, and they've tried to keep it in a very very similar style to the original game so yeah yeah go look that up it's actually quite interesting from what i saw the game actually supports multiple joysticks which is not very common for amiga games at all and if you read through the manual there's a like blueprints for what is effectively a, a four player joystick adapter so you can effectively use one port and have four other people plugged into the side of it now i've never seen or heard anything like that for the amiga before and from what i could tell reading on different games and things it's certainly not very common and if anyone's ever seen that or even attempted to do it by god i'd, I'd be interesting to see some sort of picture or possibly even a video or something running just to drop me a line at uh, lefarious at amigarama.com and I'll definitely take a look at that. As an aside, I'd also like to send out a huge thanks to uh, Dan from Lemon Tube Amiga. Yet again, he sat there and put up with me for uh, a good hour or so, just playing through the game and just trying it out in multiplayer. And that's going to be our footage to go alongside the podcast. You can see that in the usual places uh, at MeagerArmor.com. But again, a big huge thanks to Dan. He has a very active YouTube channel, loads and loads of Amiga footage, uh, all helping out over at uh, LemonAmiga.com. Usually at this point, I would jump into the game manual and probably read out the story or go on Wikipedia and try and work out what's actually going on, but this is effectively a racing game and I'm afraid there's nothing here. There's not even a hint at some uh, supercharged up chap trying to spend all his spare time trying to win some sort of uh, racing cup. There's nothing in here. It's Yes, it is just a racing game. Now, the game itself, uh, it's an is isometric viewpoint, uh, 2.5D graphics. And playing the AGA version, one of the first things I felt, especially when I was uh, playing it extensively, is that this is really, really similar to uh, something that should be on later consoles. The, the, even though it's not quite full like 3D graphics and stuff, it, it's convincing enough with the shape and the shape of them and the way the tracks are, are drawn. It, it's like something off the uh, the PlayStation. Now, the play screen itself is not littered with any sort of track information, any sort of speed hubs or text or anything like this. This is pretty much a core racing game, and in a way, it's a bit similar to uh, having like driving RC racers around the track. You just get no indication whatsoever. Above each car, you've got like, depending on which position you're in, you'll get a, a number, and that's about as exciting as it goes. There's no fuel dials, no speed dials, there's absolutely nothing. It's all pure uh, racing graphics graphics but it as I will go to in a bit it does actually work quite well now one thing I did notice that if you've got one meg and beyond it does allow extra players now on a standard version it's only like about four but you can have up to eight cars on sorry players I meant cars you can have extra cars on the screen and over one meg allows you to have eight and that might not sound like too much of a lot but compared to some other races that can turn into a mad scramble especially with lots of uh, vehicles dotted around. The cars are almost 3D-like. It's a bit polygon style in a way, but there's actually a, quite a fair bit of detail on them. And there's, there's all sorts of different cars and vehicles dotted throughout, but they all look quite good for the Amiga. And, and it's probably some of the, the best car graphics for that style that I've actually seen on the system. Uh, if I was to compare it to another Amiga game, I'd probably say it's a bit similar in graphics wise to ATR, that, that sort of futuristic yet, yet modern and current, I'm going off one on one there, it's very very hard to describe these cars but they're almost 3D but obviously they're not quite 3D but it just works well and it impressed me and that's all that really matters. 
one of the biggest takes from the graphics about this is again I do get caught up on these graphics an awful lot but they are really good just have to trust me <laughs> uh, the vehicles actually leave skid marks on the track so whilst you're uh, swinging about in all directions you can actually see tire marks on the ground now this is certainly not something I've seen on any other Amiga game and I don't think anything else did it certainly past this point but again it was uh, very very impressive uh, the tracks are all quite simple affairs on the side Lined, you've got like people, uh, uh, huts and shacks, other vehicles, things like that. There, there's no fuel, uh, certainly no pit stops. It, it's just pure racing. You know, you just jump in there with your controller and you play it. Uh, there's around 48 tracks in total. Now, a lot of them are repeats uh, uh, from the first game, and, and I suppose it's cheating in a way, but there is like a mirrored mode where you can just reverse the track and play it in the opposite way. I'm not too sure if that really counts as extra tracks because I know a few games that uh, have done that. I think uh, Super Off-Road is probably one that comes to mind because it's a similar sort of a, a look in a way, but more arcadey. But yeah, I oh, oh, am I wrong there? I'm not entirely sure. I'm not entirely sure. I never am sure. I should do more, more practice, shouldn't I, before I do the episodes? But all these tracks really do add to up a, an impressive amount of content. I mean, it's it's on seven discs, which is a hell of a lot, and, and unless you've got the CD loading, of course. Uh, but you usually, you know, you get about like ten tracks, something like that, spread across two discs. They really have gone to town with this, and you've got so many to explore and drive around. It'd be very, very difficult to get bored or run out of things to do. Now, of course, the most important thing for uh, games like this uh, are the controls, and I'm happy to say that the controls are absolutely spot on. You do feel like you have full control of every car it's almost like you can turn on the spot on a dime now there are difficult different vehicles throughout the game different types but they all feel completely different uh, if you're driving like uh, uh, the mini that's got very good handling on it but it's not super fast you know it can be thrown about around the corners it does feel like that with the controllers it feels restrictive as if it's a mini uh, there's an f1 car was in there just one of them there's also a porsche as well but the f1 was was my favourite by far just because it was so so fast and that's the other thing about this even though there's so much going on the screen especially if you've got like uh, eight other cars on screen at once you really can get some speed on, on some of the vehicles uh, another one that comes to mind was a, a monster truck that's quite a slow vehicle but it's huge it's got them big chunky, chunky wheels it's all about the jumps and stuff but that's here perfectly and it works just as you think it should now, there are other vehicles thrown in there. I mean, probably one of the biggest and most famous ones is uh, uh, cows which drive around the track. You can also add on caravans to them if you want. I mean, what an uh, odd extra. But if you do add them on it, it's very, very bizarre how it all slings around and goes around the track. There's an extra lot of weight uh, behind the vehicle. It's very, very strange, but it does work quite well for what the game actually is. Thanks to the uh, great controls, one thing that really did remind me of was the uh, the Micro Machines games, uh, po probably the uh, 96 edition, but this just feels very, very similar to it. The way the cars react, the way you can throw things around, and I know it's not a, a top-down like 2D racer like that, but it's very similar in style and playability. Uh, and the way the other cars react to you, it, it, it's very, very tight, it controls very well, and I was very, very impressed with it. Now, of course, one of the first things that really stood out to, to me on this is when you first boot it up and you go into the menu, there's this awesome heavy rock uh, music kicking off in the background, and I love the music on the Amiga, and this does not let you down, but uh, sadly there's only music on the uh, the main menu when it boots up, but there's nothing in game uh, there is lots of sound effects, that's things like uh, skidding, you know, sliding when you go around the corners, constant engine noises and revving, uh, lots of beeping horns, uh, sadly there's no sort of like crash uh, when you hit other cars or anything like that, which is it you get used to it, but it does seem a bit off, especially if you've been playing uh, other racing games. And it really does have uh, quite a steep difficulty curve. 
you will find that you need to spend an awful lot of time practicing with this but the great thing about it is there's just loads and loads of tracks and content even if a lot of it's like mirrored mode you know you, you, you're looking at about 25 to 30 tracks which are just like fresh tracks so there really is a, a lot to do there now there is loads of championship style modes and, and just basically racing against others to earn points. You don't actually win anything which is a bit of an off point really. Uh, uh, but the fact is you know you're racing against other cards. If you win through you win the championship. There's not really any sort of reward to that. But the great thing about it is because there's lots and lots of these championship modes. I think there was probably about 10 that I can remember looking at the menu all linked around different cars. It means that if you get stuck on say like the mini section or the monster truck section you're never in a situation say like uh, it probably won't happen but if you were playing like super mario kart and you were stuck on like the first four tracks and you can't get past them you're stuck there there's nothing else you can do on this you can really explore other things start learning with other cars and just learn the tricks and trades of the game then there's so much content that it does work quite well for that and the biggest plus point about the game is that there is loads and loads of replayability. You know, it's genuinely challenging. It's a real joy to play and, and race against the others. The single player and the multiplayer, although they are different things, they have a lot of, uh, 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 I don't know how you put it, a lot of joy between the different versions. In single player, it's more focused on your skill and how well you do against the other drivers, whereas in, in multiplayer, it, it, it's more a mad dash to see if you can beat the other person, but you can have more fun. Whereas in a single player, you're more focused on sticking to racing lines and getting through the track and then just racing properly. And then it works really, really well. Of course, it does have its problems. Now, the biggest one is that it's quite difficult to play against the AI. I mean, they have tweaked this, um, you know, compared to the original, because I remember vaguely the original, and, and, and it was quite an easy game to get through, but not with the sequel. My God, it, it's really, really tough to play against them. They pretty much stick to the racing lines. They don't veer much off them, and you can disrupt them to some degree, but you really do have to put a lot of time and effort into learning the tracks, and you know, you've got to stick to like similar racing lines and take opportunity to sneak past and race against them properly. But at the same time, it's, it, it's good because it really makes you practice you get to appreciate the game a lot more it's not just a pick up and play for five minutes and, and complete a, a few courses no you really have to learn the tracks and take the time and, and learn the way the other players are and how they react to situations and stuff and it's quite in depth for a racing game there's not many i can say that that, that really really do that uh, some niggles about it when you're going around uh, like circular sections on the track so you'll come in uh, you'll be going upwards and you'll like swoop round to the right to curve back on yourself uh, you're like locked in the loop there if you come up to, to the track before that you couldn't turn right even though it's open you couldn't turn right because there's an invisible wall there now these invisible walls are, are quite prevailing in lots of lots of areas and they do get in your way a lot and that might sound odd but uh, uh, one thing I can think of in particular is like when you're in the uh, the monster trucks and you'll go up a ramp uh, uh, the, there's no actual single individual ramps it's just the track will go up into a point and you can go spring slow driving over it and spring off up into the air and do a big jump but the problem is outside of the actual course that you're on there's invisible walls and if you hit the, the left of the track or the right of the track it just bounces you back in and it's a bit like dodgems in a way where you've got that wall there which feels fine when you're struggling to get through a bunch of people because it means you're not being slid off the track all the time but when you're in something like the monster troll you know you're going at a nice bit of speed and you take off you, the car is quite big and you want to be able to turn and enjoy a bit of air and you know crash your way through things but if you go slightly off course or, or, or you know clip someone else you will hit this invisible wall and most of the time you do just bounce off into the right direction but other times it can stop you completely and you do lose it a bit a bit too much speed so it, it's it's more frustrating it's not a, a, a big niggle or a problem it's just uh, one of them things that stood out to me as like Oh, I just wish they'd uh, opened up the, the, the areas a bit more. Uh, one of the other things I think this really, really needed, I mean, it's great that there's so many tracks and there's lots and lots to do and, and to play, and, you know, it's enjoyable on that front, but it could really do with something like 
a training mold or a, a management mold. I mean, something like, say, a sensible world of soccer where you can play the game, but you can focus on doing something with the cars. I mean, they already put up like a menu system, uh, uh, you know, for picking the tracks and stuff. So it would have been so much easier if they just come up with some sort of like a basic manager. Uh, maybe you like you can earn things for your car and add things on and, and you know, build, say, a team up uh, over a season and deal with other teams and things. I mean, it would have made it a completely different game, I suppose, but it would have been nice to have some sort of like data disc and especially looking at the history of this game and all the other uh, uh, games that they released. I mean, that was another thing. I had a huge problem just trying to work out details about this game because they made so many of I think there was about seven or eight uh, uh, skid marks type games and it's all very confusing with the titles and there's also a lot of uh, data discs thrown in there so it's not 100% sure of, of what to work out it, it, uh, that's not a real something that would bother you I'm sure if you went looking for Super Skid Marks 2 you wouldn't have a problem but when you're looking in depth and trying to get some proper details about it it's just uh, something that just wound me up now, uh, another problem I had with it, you really, really do need to learn to stick to the racing lines. Uh, that's something from very modern games like uh, uh, Gran Turismo, that sort of thing. But this is quite apparent in this game, even though it's not like, it's not like a racing line where it's drawn on the screen, but all the other drivers tend to stick quite close to it and it's like the main point where you can get the quickest way through each section and stuff you know that's why you have to learn uh, learn the track but what it means is when it comes to overtaking especially if there's like five or six cars or more a lot of the time the, the areas are quite narrow on the track so you're you're having to wait for them to speed on or you're having to ram your way through which doesn't always work because it can be just become like a, a, a mad clash in the middle and and it's fun to some degree, but at times you think, well, if they're pushing you to do more direct racing and, and get more involved, it, it doesn't always quite work in the middle. I'm, again, I'm describing that uh, as a very, very uh, odd thing. Of course, this came on seven discs, as I've said earlier, and one of the biggest problems, I mean, you probably won't notice this if you're playing it on an emulator or even the CD32 because that's on CD, but the amount of disc loading is absolutely insane. It takes, it feels like it takes about 15 hours to load uh, in between courses and things. And in fact, they, they, they knew that it, it was a problem because from the actual main menu and an old loading screen, you can actually play like a, a, a mini pong game there's a couple of bats there and a big ball bouncing about and you know you can use your mouse cursor and stuff to sorry you can ask you, your controller to uh, flick back and forth i mean that's fine uh, if you can deal with that on the disc but i found with the with the emulator and i try to record footage that i ended up putting it onto turbo load mode just to get past them so that's more of a, a back in the day so i can oh back in the day i've done it again i've done it again uh, one other restriction I noticed, which of course doesn't apply to the main uh, Amiga systems on the CD32, it's uh, sadly limited to two players. I know I'm not entirely sure why they did that, especially with the uh, choice of being able to use like the uh, Amiga keyboard and stuff. They could have expanded it out, but they didn't. They just restricted it for later. Uh, one of the other odd things about the game as well is. There's no like bonuses or upgrades and, and, and what I mean is when you, when you select a car before the race, there's no physical damage to the cars and you can't bash into walls or other people and do any major damage to them. You know, you just bounce off, you, you lose a bit of speed, you keep driving. Now again, that's not really a problem at the time because most games were like this, but you're stuck using the same vehicle. So if you're doing the mini races, you're stuck with the same mini throughout there and there's no sort of bonus. It's not like, say, Mario Kart, where you pick up or F-Zero or something where you can pick up different upgrades, maybe give you a speed boost or uh, you don't need a weapon, but some sort of upgrade. Maybe if you like started getting better exhausts and better engines and the cars would become uh, sharper and quicker and, and, and easier to drive. There's none of that. And I suppose that ties in with the sense that you're missing that whole management uh, uh, add-on idea for it it, it could have just worked that little bit more because I mean but there is a lot here it's quite enjoyable but these are just little niggles that it really wouldn't I don't think would have been too difficult for them to add something on the magazines of the time were extremely kind to this, gave it some very good scores. Uh, the first was Amiga Power. They gave the CD32 edition uh, 92%. But, but, 
the standard floppy disk version and they moaned about loading as I did they gave it 86% you know it really is a problem it's not just like like 10 or 20 seconds wait and you you know it's like several minutes to get between tracks and when you're playing something like this a racing game where you want to be on the ball and get through things quickly it can be quite frustrating I suppose it'd be even more so if you were playing it with uh what is it up to eight players it caused all sorts of problems uh, see you Amiga gave this 84% uh, again they mentioned the loading Amiga format 92% they didn't seem to mention the loading uh, Amiga computing 89% and Amiga Joker 85 I mean that's quite an impressive uh, range of scores but bear in mind this is a 95 game so at the time, you know, most of the Amiga mags were pretty much marking up everything that came out. But from playing this, it, it really does deserve these scores. I've, I've no complaints against these. And the fact that they even mentioned the loading and I noticed it myself uh, means it, it was a problem. Uh, now, I said there is lots and lots of different versions of these games and add-ons and stuff. And I think it's just a case that the, the, the company realized they had a, a big hit on the hand. So they started doing as much as pretty much milking it for as much as possible. But I've, I've no idea how they could like market this properly and, and pass it out to people because it was very, very confusing. Even going back to magazines at the time, there's just loads and loads of different ads and it's it's the same like the skid marks series but like super skid marks which we're looking at here it isn't actually called super skid marks 2 which is what it actually is until you load the menu and it's got the two on it so there's a bit of a difference is it super skid marks one is it i don't know it's just very very confusing and it just it just blew my brain when i was trying to work out uh, what was going on uh one of the biggest problems i felt with the game overall uh, the difficulty. I mean, you really do have to put a lot of time and effort into uh, just learning the tracks out of the AI goals. And then I'm talking about a single player here, of course. Uh, you know, but there is a real sense of like like achievement. You know, you you really do feel special when you've managed to like get in first, second, or third place. I, I'm afraid I never managed to get as as high as that. I only ever got as high as fourth. I think uh, you have to get in fifth and beyond to be able to uh, go beyond go on to the the other tracks. That's another restriction, by the way. You know, you are limited in that sense. You get stuck on, on one area, you have to go and try something else unless you can get in fifth. But by God, that really can be difficult. Just getting around down from eight to fifth can really, really uh, uh, be an issue. Uh, as I said before, it's a real shame that there's no like bonuses, uh, 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 you know, e there's no like extra tracks hidden. That was one of my biggest grumbles about it in a way because I, I, I thought that you do all these 48 tracks, you take part in all the championship races and that's pretty much what you've got. There's nothing hidden away, there's no way, you know, if you earn so many golds or come first and everything, you'll get something a little bit extra. Maybe they could have done something like that. Again, this game is spread over seven discs. I'm sure they could have found a, a little extra uh, uh, space for a, a tiny little figure of eight track or something, which was uh, uh, super difficult maybe for the, for the high-end drivers. Uh, biggest plus about this is the multi multiplayer is what this is all about you know it's loads and loads of fun i only played this with uh, dan of course and again a big thank you to dan for his time and effort uh but this really is something else compared to the uh, 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 uh the single player again in a way it, it reminded me a lot of uh, mario kart that mad dashing around you know it's a mad scramble to try and win there's no battle mode because it's not that sort of a game but it really is is crazy spending time with the person slugging your way around the tracks and taking it it really is a, a lot of fun the graphics are probably some of the best I've seen for the Amiga. It's almost 3D. It just blew me away. I completely forgot what this game was like. But again, you've got to consider back at the time that most of the racing games were all 2D or they were like behind the car sort of view. There was nothing to this degree. And then and, and to see something like this, this almost 3D racer on the actual Amiga just absolutely blew me. Again, it, it should be like a PlayStation game, something much, much further down the line. We're years away from this sort of game, especially at the time. Uh, the championship modes, uh, that was another grumble, I think. Uh, they were a bit limiting. Uh, you, you're always stuck to a single car. Uh, I mean, I think that might be down to the actual Amiga limitations itself. And what I mean is, you know, you're racing. Let's see if you've got it in full wax. So you've got all the, the, the RAM to high heaven, all the expansions on. 
you're stuck with eight cars, but all the other eight cars are all they're all different colours, but they're all same same car as you. So there's not real there's not much of a difference because there's no like upgrading or, or bonuses to collect. You you're pretty much racing against yourself with a bit of AI. You, you know you're not really pushing to do anything more of it and again it just feels like there's this they've missed a trick if only they could have maybe mixed the cars up a bit because i would have loved to race against a monster truck or the f1 car or the porsche and things like that could you know it'd been a bit of fun that i like, really struggle with a mini to try and take on the f1 car I mean, but again i think it was down to uh, system limitations because if maybe if you've got multiple different types of cars it might overstress the process because you again this is something it, it really is pushing the uh, the immediate eager to the limit i mean it's no surprise that this game is 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 seen as a, a, a true amiga classic i mean it does have its problems you know it, it can be over challenging the difficulty curve is it can be a bit too steep i thought i mean just playing it, i was really really frustrated with it at first and i had to I had to put a good chunk of time into start you know, learning the tracks properly and swinging me around. And once you've got past that, it's fine. But I can see a lot of people will get frustrated with it. And, you know, you really got to take your time to learn it and play it properly. Uh, but, you know, the, the most impressive thing about it, especially for the time, is the multiplayer options because there's so many of them. Uh, you just don't get that on other games. Uh, and I think the whole thing just shows that, you know, even this late in its life, I mean, 95, that, that, that the Amiga could still impress. I mean, everyone treats the Amiga like it's just this standard, like, uh, 16 bit things on par with, like, the, the Mega Drive and the, the SNES. But, you know, this sort of game with these graphics and the way it looks and it was playing, I, to me, this was almost like a PlayStation, you know, that's the next generation sort of game. And they, they really did have, have the work out putting all this together and they really did a, a fantastic job with it. Again, it needed a few bit of tweaking here and there but overall they can be proud of this it really really is a good game and probably one of my uh, uh, favorite racing games now i think it might just uh, uh, beat indie heat to the top spot just to insert here a quick editor's note it seems that when i went back to the game after finish recording you can actually select different cars so i got a bit confused on that i just didn't pick up on it when i was uh, recording the show uh, and with that, I think that's the perfect time to uh, finish the episode. You're probably all passed out in shock. Or there's somebody thinking, well, what's so good about Indie Heat? Just go and look at Indie Heat. Go and listen to the episode. It's an awesome racer. Anyway, that's that's an aside. That's an aside. Uh, as always, guys, if you want to uh, contribute to the podcast, uh, you can go and I'll see you and see this in action, especially my footage with Dan. Then come along to AmigaRama.com. You can message me, message me on Twitter, which is is at Amigarama pod or even drop me an email on lafarius at amigarama.com i promise i reply to all emails anyway until next time guys